These are the last three problems on the study guide for Algebra B, Test 4 and Quarter 3. So let's take a look at them. Basically, it's three problems separated. And we've got the height, maximum height. We're going to end up finding the time in air. And we're going to end up finding the time it takes to hit the ground. So three separate problems, but they could end up being combined as one. We've seen them combined as one. In, in homework problems. So let's take a look at the first one here. It talks about the height of a baseball after it's hit is modeled by this equation or this function down below where x represents the time in seconds after the ball is hit. Find the time it takes the ball to reach its maximum height. Well whenever you want to know time to maximum height this is the formula you want. Negative b over 2a. And so it's the axis of symmetry for these. And so all you're going to do is just take your B term, which is the 144, take the A term, which is negative 16, and substitute. And so we have 144 over, and the opposite of 144, over 2 times negative 16. Do a little bit more work there. We've got a 144, I'll stick with that negative sign being there, and over negative 32. So we can go ahead and reduce this fraction, taking out some common factors. And so I see that, well, 12 doesn't go into these numbers, but there is a 4 that we could divide by. So I could take out a common factor 4 just to make the division a little bit easier on myself. And so I see maybe down here I'll do 144 over into 4. So as I'm thinking about it, 4 goes into that 14. We've got 3 times, making a 12, so 2 left over, and 24, 36. So it just made the problem a little bit easier doing that division. So 36 now over, and then again, these negative signs will cancel. 32, 4 into 32 goes just 8 times. Well, I see another common factor, another 4. Take out one more 4 there, so I could have taken out 16, it looks like. Do that division. See what we end up with. 36 divided by 4 makes 9, and 8 divided by 4 makes 2. So that just made the problem a little bit easier. 2 goes into 9 4 times with 1 half left over. So 4.5 seconds. That's all it's going to take to get to that maximum height. So look for these. Now, your problems will be mixed up, so they're not going to necessarily be in this order. So when it says time to maximum height, it's just the axis of symmetry formula. Well, the next one is going to ask for the maximum height, because right here at the end it says find the maximum height of the rocket. So the height of the rocket after it is launched can be modeled by this function. Here's the function right here, where t is in time, and yeah, time in seconds. is the time in seconds, and we're trying to find that maximum height. So you've got to start with that axis of symmetry formula. You've got to find the time to the maximum height, and then substitute. So we're ending up doing 38... 40 all over, and the opposite of that, over 2 times by negative 16. So, so I see a problem like this. If I were to do it, I would take out the common factor. So I see 2 goes into this number, and actually I see 4 goes into it. So I see 4 goes into 40, so I'm going to go ahead and divide this number by 4, and I'm going to divide the 16 by 4 and the negative signs will end up canceling. So down below, maybe just set up a little problem here. 4 into 3840. 4 goes into 38. 9 times makes 36. With 2 left over, it goes into 24. It goes in there 6 times evenly. And so that'll end up giving us 0, so I'll have to bring up that 0. So, so far I've got 960, and then 4 went into 16 4 times, so this made 4. 4 times 2 makes 8. Well, I see that we could probably divide by another 4. So I don't know if I could divide by 8 or not, but I'll try the 4 to start with. So now I'm going to do 960, divide by, oops, let's fix that, divide by the 4 one more time, because I know 4 goes into 60. So 4 goes into 9, we have 2 times, it makes 8, 1 left over, goes into 16, and there 4 times, so 240. It looks like it's going to reduce all the way. And so I'll keep on doing some work here. Now I have 240, and this is all over 2. Well, I could just do this division myself. It makes 120 over 1. So now I've got the time it takes to reach the maximum height, so we're going to go ahead and substitute that number into these t's to find out how high it ends up going. And so we've got negative 16 times by 120. I'm going to square that number. Plus 3 840 times by 120. Now remember the rule. 
Opposite signs, one double the other is what we're looking for. So we've got really big numbers we're having to deal with here. So I've got to square this 120. Now, if you just think of 12 squared, that makes 144. And then just add two zeros. So that would be the number. So that's that part times by negative 16. And then over here, you just got to multiply out these numbers. Well, when we do this multiplication, we end up with a 460800. So 460,800. Over here, when I multiply out these two numbers, I end up with a negative 230,400. And add that 460,800, and you'll see that they are opposite signs, and one is double the other. So our answer is going to be this, 230,400. And there it is, and that is in feet. And there we have it. Well, taking a look at the next one here, it's just a, a asking us when will it impact the ground. And so that's when we're going to end up having to find out, well, we're going to end up having to factor this one. And the reason we have to factor this one is because it has this 3t for the function. Whenever it has a t term or just a x term, uh, that means that it do, you can't just double the time to the maximum height. So the motion of a basketball after it's thrown can be modeled by this function where t is in time in seconds after the basketball is thrown, find the time in which it will impact the ground. And so we're going to go ahead and just set h equal to 0 and try to factor it. And when I do that, I try first 2t and t for the numbers that multiply to make that 2t squared. Numbers that multiply to make 35, well, I'm thinking of 5 and 7. Now, in order for them to subtract to make 3, I'm going to try this one first. Let's check it first. We've got 10t. Here I have 7t, and yes, I do get those to subtract to make 3t. So it doesn't end up working out. To make it a negative, we'll make the 10 negative and the 7 positive. Well, from that point, we're just going to take the two factors and set them equal to 0, and we'll get two different answers. We'll talk about those answers in just a moment. So here I'm having to subtract the 7 from all sides first. So I've got 2t equals negative 7. Divide by 2. And we've got our answer. So negative 7 halves. That's one of the answers. Over here, I'm having to add the 5 to all sides. And when I do that, I get t equals 5. So there it is. 5 seconds. 5 seconds. That's all it took to get to the maximum height. Now I'm going to use 5 seconds rather than the negative 7 halves because this is negative. So we don't have negative answers. So because of this, this is that extra answer that they usually have with quadratics since it can cross the x-axis two times. So sometimes we'll have that. So we just go with the positive ones. Well, those are the problems you'll end up seeing on this week's test. Good luck.